Welcome to the New Year's Eve edition of Ask Woody. Tonight we're going to do a, a actual demonstration from start to finish of doing a backup of a computer. And I'm doing this on a virtual machine because I've actually already set up backups on all my other machines. So I wanted to do it from the installation process all the way through to the end. So that's why I'm doing it on a virtual machine. And by the way, if you hear any what sounds like gunfire or fireworks in the background. I am literally doing this on December 31st and people in my area like to to set off firecrackers and fireworks. So again, if you hear anything in the background, it's just my neighbors doing their normal thing for New Year's Eve. Now, some of you overseas are actually already in the new year. Some of you, like me, are several hours away from the new year. But I wanna make sure that everyone starts the new year off on the right foot and that is no matter what happens to your machine whether it's worrying about updates worrying about attacks worrying about viruses worrying about ransomware all of that goes away when you have a backup with everything that goes on in the computing system today as long as you have a backup as long as you have a way to recover you can face patch Tuesday with no problem at all. You can face risks on the internet with no problem at all. Now, I'm not advocating that you go madly out there and click everything, but you feel a little bit better when you know you have a backup. So I'm a fan of Macrium Reflect. It's just the one I'm used to. You can pick other brands out there. I'm doing this on a Windows 11. Somebody the other day was saying that I'm, I'm not focusing enough about Windows 11. Mainly because I only I have a few machines on 11, but the bulk of my machines are on still on 10. So I'll try to give tonight a bit more um, time and effort tonight on Windows 11 and show showcasing how I'm doing a backup on it. So the one unusual thing about pretty much any backup software is they make you go through this process of requesting a trial, even if you're ready to buy it. So you request a trial and you put in your email address and you have to get this link to a download. And then once you get it, you start the process to install on in your machine. And it goes and installs. And pretty much you just accept the end user license agreement. Now, if you are a better person than I, you would actually read this but like most geeks, I just scroll down and go, okay. Now you can either do a 30 day trial or put in a license key. And I'm gonna pause, because I'm actually doing a license for this just to show the full setup. So hold on, I'm gonna put in the license key and then I'll be back in just a moment. And now we are ready to go. Whoops, it acted like it tried to do it. Whoops, let's try that again, hold on. So now it's installing, or it's about to, as soon as I hit next. And there's a couple of questions that it wants along the way. And what, um, if you want to do a, a faster backup, it does this changed block tracking. If you want to do um, ransomware protection, and what that does in particular, it encrypts the external drive. So should ransomware get on your machine, it doesn't encrypt the backup. I'm sure you've read in, in many literature is about how when ransomware gets on a system it not only wants to go after the system it wants to destroy the backups as well so that's one of the things and usually in home situations I don't install this vboot that's more of a business um, one but if you do have a business setting you may want to do this virtual booting so that you have an instant way to get back into it again I usually just take the defaults here click next click install It installs. And it is done. And it, now we need to restart the machine. So now we're back and we're going to click on the shortcut and we're going to set up the backup process. Uh, 
and close all this because I don't need it. Now what I've done is I've set up a second drive. Normally you get a pretty inexpensive USB external drive is usually what I recommend for home users. But you can have, especially like if you're in small business, you can have like a NAS device, you can have a larger um, one of those, those backup devices. Bottom line, have something that you can um, easily monitor and you can um, back up to on a regular basis. And there's a couple of, of questions that it usually asks you. So you can, what's called um, image the disks or create an image required to backup and restore windows or finally they create an, a file and folder backup. Now the file and folder backup is simply if you've got files you don't care so much about the operating system, but you just want certain files backed up someplace. That's what this one is for. Um, this one is if you actually want to um, back up and restore. So this is the one we want, especially for our Patch Tuesday process. So we're going to click on this one. And we want all of the drives on the system. And we're going to do a destination. And we're going to pick a location. And I may have to format that external funky drive. I think I do. So hold on. Let me pause that and I will set that up. So I've come in here and I'm going to select a source. And again, I'm going to go with the defaults they've picked already. That's my main drive. That's where the C partition is. And then I'm going to come down here and pick the location, the destination of where I want that backup to be. And I'm going to click on this PC, New Volume, and I'm going to say Next. And while I'm here, we're going to check out Advanced Options, because I always like to check around. And this is where the you have the compression level. Again, I'm pretty much going to keep everything the same way, but just going to show you what you can choose in here. File size is automatic. You can enable a password if you like. You can turn on verifying the image. Some people like to do that. You can um, prefix a name. You can shut down your computer after the finish. You can also set up, I do this especially at the office. Um, I make sure I set up um, a notification of, of the success and especially a failure of, of a backup. So. Um, if you don't necessarily want to have an email each time you get a success, you definitely want to have an email each time you have a warning. And you send a notification, put in your email address, and you set it up. Um, and you may want to attach the log file to let you know what's going on. And then I hit next. And then I'm going to say what kind of schedule do I want? Do I want to do it every day? Do I want to let it do itself? We can also pick a, a template, what's called a grandfather, father, son. That's the pretty traditional one. You can do incrementals. I'm going to do that one. And you can edit the schedule and pick a certain a different time. Let's say you want to do it at night when you're not using it. Let's say you want to do it middle of the day, whatever you want to do. So you click on next. And if you see everything that looks everything's OK, you click on finish. And I'm going to actually start and run the backup now. So click OK. And you'll see the backup started. And it's creating a snapshot. I'm going to actually wait here and let it do its thing.
And I always look at backups as, again, what, what do you need to get back into business as quickly as you can? If you have other computers and there's just, you know, what's important, more important than anything else is data, maybe you want to just back up the data and do a file type backup. Um, if you don't have other computers, if this is your only computer, you want to do this image style backup. So that should something happen to your, your system, you can recover. And you can see it's, this is obviously I don't, this is a sample machine, I don't have a lot. This may take longer if you have more data on your machine. Some people also separate the operating system from the data so they'll have two hard drives in their system or they'll partition it out a different way. Um, usually for Usually for the computers I have, I tend to leave just one hard drive. To me, it's just easier, but that's, again, some people like to have multiple partitions. Some people like to have multiple hard drives. Some people just like to have one big hard drive. It just depends on what your, kind of what your comfort level is, where your data is and how big your hard drives you want to handle. I do know that these days I do recommend a minimum of 200 gigs or more. I used to be 100, 150 gigs or more, but nowadays with Windows 10 and Windows 11, it's 250 gigs. Or two, I should say 200 gigs or more. So whatever, whatever you see out there in the marketplace. And there, again, we're not doing a big drive. That's it. It's actually done and completed. Okay, now, we're not done yet. There's one more step I want you to do. And there's a little button over here called Rescue. And what this does is makes it easier to rescue your system. So you click on this Rescue, and there's two things you wanna do. First off, you can change the boot menu so that as it boots up, it, it pauses temporarily to allow you to select to go into the, the backup and recovery process, or you can build what's called an ISO file. And what this does is it builds a bootable flash drive for you. So should, heaven forbid, something horrible occur, this gives you the media you need to boot from to then recover automatically from, from the backup process. And I'm gonna pick Windows boot menu is my choice. I like doing this, so I like to change it, and I'll show you what this does. So you click on build, and what it does is actually going in the process and changing the boot to give a option to boot into the recovery mode. And it's gonna do its thing. Usually doesn't take too long. But again, this makes it easier for you to recover. So you don't wanna just back up your drive, you wanna look for these ways to recover your system. And it's adding that to the menu. And when this is done, I'll actually boot into the process and show you what it's like. In addition, while I'm here as well, I'm gonna click on ISO file and I'm gonna build that as well. And again, you wanna make sure that you have some kind of rescue. 
and I'm going to, um, ultimately, ultimately what you do is you would change this to a flash drive location. You would actually build a, a um, media, but I don't have, this again is the virtual machine, so you, but you kind of get the idea that you'd browse and you'd build it to another location. You'd get your flash drive out there and you'd build it. Okay, so now I'm going to, and while I'm here, I'm going to show you. So there's my, there's my backup right there. So now I'm going to reboot and show you what it looks like as it boots in to the boot menu. And again, this is a virtual machine, so it's going to look a little different than a real machine, but you'll get the idea. <clears throat> so you can see it changed the system menu here a little bit, so you can either boot into Windows 11 as you'd normally do, or come down here to the system recovery. So if something happened, you'd be able to boot into the recovery process and you can see it's it's loading up the backup software and now you're able to fix Windows boot problems open an image redeploy restored image to new hardware you can restore it back all those things because we have a backup In part two, I'm actually going to redeploy or restore the full image. So see you on the next video.